so for question that ask you for example if a question is there that asks like what is the fluid connective tissue of the body okay now we know that the fluid connective tissue of the body is blood now to answer this question we will write the full sentence like the fluid connective tissue of our body is blood full stop many a time students what they do is that they put one word answer that is not how you do it okay because you know from like in these homeworks only if you take it as the way you will be writing your test so your habit will be going on for this okay so wherever possible write really nice like nice and neat sentences and form them as if you are answering your exam okay now for the chapters that are here like for example biological classification there are no uh, like diagrams or anything inside this chapter but in biology in general wherever possible you must draw diagrams now this chapter does not have any diagrams so now tell me where were we in the previous class where did i left off examples of parasitic basidiomycetes yes basidiomycetes yes yes example of basidium i said like this is where you people are have to note down from or i have to explain further from here ma'am you showed in uh, rasmus uh, asexual spores are absent and i haven't explained deuteromycetes yet no ma'am okay okay so uh, yeah so we have discussed in here so i have showed you the rust and the smut now moving on to the fourth class of kingdom fungi that is deuteromycetes now this is the most easiest one here the organisms or this class is also known as fungi imperfecti or you can say that they are the imperfect fungi now there is a reason why they are known as uh, the imperfect fungi is because in them only the asexual and the vegetative reproduction these two kinds are only known sexual reproduction does not happen in them it is not known so that is why they are imperfect fungi now in them the hyphae is branched and septate asexual spores are conidia and mode of nutrition some members are saprophytic meaning they feed on the dead and decaying and some are parasitic in nature maximum number of them are decomposers of litter and help in mineral cycling so they break down the organic substances and make it available into the soil so that is mineral cycling so this is all there is about the deuteromycetes and the examples for deuteromycetes are alternaria coleto trichum and trichoderm clear any doubts in this also students uh one more thing one thing i was noticing in the uh, this thing the homework that you people upload is that as far as cenocytic goes what does cenocytic means what is the meaning of cenocytic hmm? can anyone answer what is the meaning of cenocytic Am I audible, students? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yes. So tell me, what is the meaning of cenocytic or cenocyte? What is it? Hmm. No one can tell me what happened. No one is replying. What, Zana? Say it again, please. My nucleus. Nucleus. My no. And. See, we have discussed that the hyphae in many uh, this thing fungi it is cenocytic in nature, meaning that. the hyphae contains multiple nuclei that do not have any cross wall formation this cross wall formation is not there this condition a multi nucleate condition wherein there is no cell wall formation 
that is a sinusitic condition okay and whenever there is septate word it means that the walls have been formed in those clear now moving forward talking about uh, okay so the next thing that we will be moving on to will be the things that have not gotten any kingdom they are not classified into groups but they are studied separately but before that let us discuss one more thing that is the kingdom animalia sort of like a quick introduction aspect of it okay so because we have this whole entire chapter only for it but still we'll discuss a little bit about the kingdom animalia now all the members of the kingdom animalia they are heterotrophic isn't it is there any animal that can synthesize its own food no ma'am no no they all the, yes very good all the members are heterotrophic and they are eukaryotic meaning they have a membrane bound nucleus and membrane bound cell organelle they they are multicellular and do they have cell walls or not they have hmm they have cell walls hmm no this is the major difference the plant mm -hmm. kingdom they and, and uh, the fungi and all they have and the cell wall present but all the members of the kingdom animalia they do not have the cell wall present in them okay is my screen visible to you students no <clears throat> now yeah. yes sir okay now the cell wall is absent meaning it's not there 100% the cell wall will be absent now tell me one more thing mm, what do you think will their digestion be like how do they eat or oh, first of all tell me the reserve food material of animals anyone knows reserve food material glycogen. of animals very good glycogen what is the reserve food material of plants starch very good starch now apart from that their mode of nutrition there is something unique about it so their mode of nutrition is holozoic holozoic means that they procure the food as a whole right they ingest the food and then the digestion happens in the body so that is holozoic mode of nutrition we'll discuss this in detail when we talk about the kingdom animalia now apart from uh, this they are movable right they are motile meaning that they can locomote from here to there they can move um okay and yes what kind of reproduction will be there in the case of animals sexual reproduction sexual. very good sexual reproduction is present so this is like the introductory part of the kingdom animalia now kingdom animalia has been divided into multiple phylum such as phylum porifera cilindrata but we'll discuss it one by one right now we'll only talk about the introductory part as to what all things we are to understand over there now coming on to all those organisms that have not been given any specific place in kingdom animal or any kingdom viruses viroids prions and lichen they have not been given a special place so see talking about viruses they are not truly living you cannot call them as living organism what happens is that outside the body of the host they are dead but as soon as they get inside the body of the host then they become living so truly they are not living at all they have an inert crystalline structure inert means it does not react with anything crystalline it is in the form of a crystal and it is the structure that they have now it is present like this inert crystalline structure is present outside the living cells when they are not in the living cell they are in a inert crystalline structure they are not living organism viruses become alive when they enter a host body and what they do is that then they take over the machinery of the host and kills the host 
So viruses enter the body of the host. Now host is the organism on which the parasite will, you can say, what? It will infect the parasite, derive the nutrition from the parasite. Okay. So with this being said, what they do is that they take over the machinery of the host and then they kill them. Okay. So viruses are very dangerous and they are purely parasitic, but they are dead outside and they become alive when they are present inside. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Also, uh, Sabiha, if you, you're not well, then you can switch off your camera. It's okay. You don't have to switch on. It's fine. You can switch off your camera. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, you can switch off. Nobody has switched on anyway. She is the only one who switches on the camera. Why do you people don't switch on the camera? Tell me this thing. I mean, is there any particular reason? Do you feel like ma'am will see us? Uh, no, my camera doesn't work. Okay, your camera doesn't work. Okay, what about others? Zana, Bhashid, what about you? Ma'am, I'm really sick, guys. You're, you are also sick? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Hashid? Ma'am, parents walk in any time. So. What? What, what, what? Please say it again. I did not hear. So what? So what? It's okay. Anyway, it's all right if you don't switch on your camera. This goes to all of you. But, you know, once in a while, you people should switch on your camera. And uh, another thing is that it's all right if you don't switch on your camera. All that I want from the class is that you people be interactive, which you are. That is why I don't have any problem. It's fine if you don't switch on your camera for today. Now, this much you've understood that viruses are not truly living and they become alive when they enter the body of the host. This is clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, moving forward. The, also, one more thing. See, right now only I told you, be interactive in the class. Okay. Even if someone has said yes, you also say yes, if you've understood. Or say no, if you've not understood. Okay, I want an interactive class. Okay, active learning is the best learning. Now, the name virus means venom. Venom means anything that is poisonous. Now, this name was given by Dmitry Ivanovsky in the year 1894. He observed that some microbes causes tobacco mosaic disease. These microbes, now when he studied the disease of tobacco, he said that, okay, these microbes are smaller, like they are even smaller than the bacteria. Why? Because they can pass through bacterial filters. So one more thing that we now know about viruses, apart from the fact that they are dead outside and living in the body of the host, they are smaller than the bacteria. Why? Because they can pass through the bacterial filters. Now, there came another scientist whose name was M. W. Bagering in the year 1898. He demonstrated that the extract of the infected tobacco plant caused disease in non-infected healthy plants. So, he wanted to see whether it is communicable or not. So, he took the extract of the diseased plant and then when he added this extract to the healthy plant, that plant also caught the disease. So, it means that the viral diseases, the diseases that are caused by the viruses, they are contagious. They can cause infection in any. That is why during the COVID times, when any one person had COVID, all the people that were in contact with that person, they also had it. Isn't it? Everyone has experienced this? Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. How many of you had COVID? You did? I had three times. Yeah, many people did actually have it. So, why? Because it was contagious. Okay. Yes, Hashi, do you want to say something? No, no, no. Okay. You raised the hand. I was like, you wanted to ask something. Okay. So, yes. So, because the extract of the infected plant caused the 
healthy plant to become infected. So M. W. Bejering he called the fluid as contagium vivum fluidum. This means that infectious living fluid. So this fluid that the virus is is infectious. Now then came W. M. Stanley. In the year 1935, he showed that the viruses could be crystallized. And those crystals largely contains of proteins. So he said that the uh, viruses can be crystallized. Is it clear up till now? And apart yes. from that, yes, very good. Now talking about the structure of the viruses and the nature of viruses. So viruses are obligate parasites, meaning they are strictly parasitic in nature, meaning that they, they do not have any other mode of living. If they will be living, they will be parasites. That is it. Okay. Also, Jesslyn, you can switch off your video. It's fine. You can switch off. It's okay. So, uh, talking about the viruses, those are obligate parasites. Everyone understands the meaning of obligate? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, if, what is the other word that I taught along with obligate? Anyone remembers that word? Like one type of living is obligate living. And the other type of living is? It, sta it starts with an S. What is the name? Maybe I haven't taught this. Have I taught facultative to you people? Yes, ma'am. So why aren't you saying it then? Facultative. Sure. Facultative. Yeah, facultative is when, for example, if someone says that this particular organism is facultative parasitic, meaning it can normally like derive nutrition from various ways, but when need be, it can be a parasite as well. But obligate means strictly only one thing. Now, talking about the body of a virus, so it contains two things. It contains proteins and it contains the genetic material. Now, the genetic material can be RNA or it can be DNA. Now, talking about the protein coat. The protein coat of the virus's body is known as the capsid. And this capsid is made up of small units that are known as capsomeres. Okay, so many capsomeres come together and form the capsid, which is the protein coat of the virus. Now, capsomeres are arranged in helical or polyhedral form to make capsid. Now, talking about the genetic material, the genetic material of viruses are of two types, that is RNA and DNA. Any one virus will have either RNA or DNA as genetic material. Because in general, any organism cannot have two genetic materials. Either it will have RNA as the genetic material or it will have DNA as the genetic material. No organism can have both. Now talking about the type of RNA and DNA. See, RNA and DNA, both of them can be of two types. Single-stranded, double-stranded. Single-stranded means only one strand is present. Double-stranded means two complementary strands are present. Now, this, uh, this information thing that I've you know, uh, made, this is very important. For example, all those viruses that are plant viruses, they have single-stranded RNA as their genetic material. But all those viruses that are animal viruses, meaning they infect animals, so they either contain single-stranded RNA or they can contain double-stranded RNA or they can contain double-stranded DNA. So either of these three, like one of these three situations can be there for animal viruses. Now there are certain viruses that infect bacteria as well. Now those viruses contain the double-stranded DNA. So which type of genetic material is present in the virus? That is very important to remember. So I'm just marking and writing here important so that you people pay a little more attention to it. Single stranded, double stranded is clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right, very good. Now talking about the viral diseases in humans. Now see, these are the names of the viral diseases that are caused in the human's body, such as rhinitis, influenza, smallpox, chickenpox, measles, 
mumps, rabies, dengue, chikungunya, herpes, hepatitis, AIDS, COVID. All of these are the diseases that are caused by viruses in human beings. And one more thing to remember. Okay, yes. Uh, everyone has heard. Or yes, Zana. Non-typhoid doesn't come under this category. Which one? Typhoid. Typhoid, no, typhoid is a bacterial disease. It is a bacterial disease, not a viral disease. We are talking about the viral disease. Okay. Yes. So, uh, talking about the viral disease, another thing that people must remember. First, you tell me, do you know what disease rhinitis is? Anyone has any idea what is rhinitis? I mean, this is not there in your syllabus. You don't, you won't get asked this question. But still, for extra knowledge. It's like a nasal problem, right, now. I can't hear you. Like a nasal problem. Nasal problem. Yeah, like. Hmm. Nasal. Actually, yes, actually it is. And rhinitis is nothing but the common cold. The common cold everyone has suffered from, that is rhinitis. It is just a fancy name of common cold. Okay. Now, don't write this that it is a fancy name. I'm just telling you. Now, these are the viral diseases in plants. Mosaic formation, leaf rolling, leaf curling, yellowing and vein clearing, dwarfing and stunted growth. All of these are the viral, like these are the symptoms that are caused in the plants because of the viral diseases. Any doubts? The virus part is clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Sure, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now moving forward, we are talking about the next type or the next group of organisms that have also not gotten any place. That is viroids. Now, viroids were discovered by T. O. Diner in the year 1971. And it is a new infectious agent. Now, it is smaller than the viruses and it is infectious. And it causes the disease that is known as potato spindle tuber disease. It causes this disease in plants. That is potato spindle tuber disease. The structures of viroids have no protein coat. Viruses have protein coat present, but viroids do not. Only the RNA as the genetic material is present. They do not have DNA. So they have just RNA as a genetic material. The RNA of viroids are of low molecular weight. Their RNA is of low molecular weight. It's not high molecular weight RNA. Now the next group of organism is prions. Now they are smaller in size to viruses. They were like abnormally folded proteins and they cause neurological diseases. Okay, they, they are like folds of proteins and they cause diseases. And the two most important diseases caused by the prions are bovine spongy form encephalopathy that is caused in cattle. It is also known as mad cow disease. Again, related to the brain, the disorder that is related to the brain, that is neurological disorder. So BSC, that is bovine spongiform encephalopathy. It causes it is it caused in it is caused in cattle. Now it uh, the prions also cause diseases in the case of human beings. That is C R Jacob disease C J D. Just remember the name. No symptoms. Nothing will be asked. It's just a neurological disease caused in humans and uh, the other diseases caused in cattle and it is caused by the prions. Any doubts in prions and viroids? No, ma'am. No. Now, lastly, talking about the lichen. Now, lichen. Okay, so talking about the lichen. Now, lichen is the symbiotic association. Okay, symbiotic association. Just one second. The screen is freezing. Just one second. Is the screen visible to you? No, ma'am. There's a glitch. Just 
Is my screen visible now? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yeah, so I was talking about the symbiotic association that is lichen. Now, lichen is not one organ. Okay, lichen is a combination of two organisms that live together and without each other, they cannot live. So, it is the symbiotic association. Or a symbiotic relationship between a fungus, oops, between a fungus and an algae. Okay, wherein the fungus is known as the mycobiont and algae is known as the phycobiont. Now, what happens is that the algae, since it is photosynthetic, it makes food and provides it to the fungus, and fungus. Since its body is huge, right? It has umbrella-like structure and everything. So it provides shelter to the algae. So both of them are benefiting each other because of this. They are known as symbiotic. Symbiosis means helping each other. And they cannot live alone. Like the fungus that can live with algae, it cannot live alone. So that is why it is a symbiotic association. And since two organisms are involved, so, a different name has been given to it that is lichen. Is it clear? Now, one more thing to tell about the lichen is that they are excellent pollution indicators. Meaning, where, like in all those areas where there is no pollution at all, they will grow only there. Lichens can grow only in an unpolluted area. And they cannot grow in the polluted area, especially in those areas that have sulfur dioxide in abundance. This sulfur dioxide, wherever it will be present, lichen will not grow. So if any place does not have any lichen, it means that that place is polluted. So they are great pollution indicators. Any doubt, students? No, ma'am. Sure? Yes, ma'am. So with this, we have actually completed the whole entire chapter. And uh, okay, now you people can note down. Also tell me, where did you left off in the previous class? From where do you have to note down? Down from Deuteronomy.
Now you can scroll. Everyone's done? Can I scroll? Now should we write kingdom and media also? Yes, yes. After this, uh, uh, deuteromycetes is done. You can write animalia just like an introductory part about the points, and then you can start with viruses and everything. Okay. Or if you are not like you, if you've written viruses and all, then you can write animalia at the end also. It depends on you. Yeah.
करना मैम कैन यू स्क्रॉल अप करो
Yes, dear. Which part about RNA? Hmm? Tell me, Jaslyn. What about RNA? Do, do you want to understand? Plant. The plant virus and the animal virus. Oh, yes, yes. See, uh, the thing that I told you was that the genetic material of viruses, they can be of two types. One is RNA and DNA. It can have only one thing. Now, see, RNA exists in two forms, that is single-stranded and double-stranded. DNA also exists in single-stranded and double-stranded. This is single-stranded and this is double-stranded. This is single-stranded and DNA double-stranded is like this, helix. Now, talking about the plant viruses, now all those viruses that infect the plant, they have single-stranded RNA as their genetic material. All those that have, like all the viruses that infect the animal, they have single-stranded RNA or double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA, like either one of these three. And the bacterial viruses, meaning the viruses that infect the bacteria, they have double-stranded DNA as their genetic material. So, mainly the thing that they want to tell you over here is that the genetic material can be only one thing only. Either DNA or RNA. Clear? Okay, ma'am. I'm done.
gunman.
يتكلم Gracias.